Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AIT for requesting that my fiancé wear makeup for the wedding if I do. I'm 26 years old and I don't wear makeup. I tried it out when I was a teenager, but I just can't stand the way it feels on my face. Plus, I genuinely don't see the point. My face is my face and I think it looks pretty good just as it is. My fiancé, who's also 26, has never complained. He always tells me I'm beautiful without any makeup on. Now, his mom and sisters, they think it's kind of weird, but they don't say anything anymore because I made it very clear early on that I wasn't going to change. So, here we are, deep in wedding planning. I've already picked out my dress and I'm setting up arrangements for a hairstylist and other stuff for the big day. My future mother-in-law offered to call a friend of hers who's a fantastic makeup artist and could give us a great deal. I told her no thanks, I wasn't planning on wearing makeup for the wedding, because I never wear it. She insisted, saying I'd regret it when I saw the photos, but I stood my ground. I've seen myself in prom dresses and other fancy outfits, and I've never wished I had makeup on. The most I'm going to do is get a spa treatment so my skin looks its best. Well, this really upset my M.I.L., and she got my fiancé involved. He asked if I would just wear makeup for the ceremony and the pictures. I told him I want to look at my wedding photos and see me. He said it would still be me, just the best version of me. That really pissed me off, not gonna lie. So I asked him if he was gonna wear makeup to look like the best version of himself. He said no, of course, so I made him a deal. I'll wear makeup if he wears makeup too, tit for tat, in a masculine style. If I wear lipstick, he wears lipstick. If I wear foundation, he wears foundation. His makeup could be completely neutral, but he has to wear it for the whole day and go through the test run and everything the stylist wants. He said I was being unreasonable, but couldn't come up with a reason why the pictures would look better if I wore makeup but not him, so he stormed off. And my sister-in-law texted me, calling me delusional if I didn't think I needed makeup and telling me to just suck it up for one day. Most of my girlfriends are on my side, and my maid of honor is ready to throw hands, but some people think it's just normal to wear makeup for formal occasions, and that I'm being difficult. My brother even thinks my conditions were emasculating to my fiancé. Story 2 A.I.T. for accusing my fiancé of copying my best friend's proposal idea. My boyfriend, 26M, and I, 24F, have been in a relationship for two years and just got engaged last week. The engagement itself was wonderful, but I couldn't help but notice how similar it was to a conversation I had with my best friend, 23F, of over a decade. This conversation happened many years ago, where she detailed exactly how she would propose to me if she ever did. It was very specific to my general likes and interests, and I mean, specific. At the time I told her that it sounded perfect and to hold on to that idea for later. It was pretty clear to me that he had approached her, and she let him know about this plan. So, after the day itself, I told my new fiancé that it was cute that he asked her how I wanted to be proposed to, but I joked that he stole her entire, very detailed plan, so it was more her proposal than his. He went quiet and then got angry, and then it all came out. He said that he always felt second place to my best friend, that I was only marrying him to satisfy my religious family, that I've been lying about my preferences, and that I'm probably having an affair with my friend. I was shocked. He's never expressed this to me before. He's complained in the past that I spend too much time with her, so I accommodated his needs as best as I could without losing my best friend, but I had no idea he thought I was having an affair. I tried to reassure him, but I thought it would be better to leave and told him that we would talk about it later. We haven't been in contact, and though I haven't told my best friend about this, others in my life think that he was completely valid for blowing up, and that I need to do all I can to fix this relationship. Was I an asshole for making that joke? Update. I was asked about my orientation I identify as asexual and my partner is straight. We had a great low-intimacy relationship. I stayed loyal throughout our relationship. We discussed how this was going to work at length when we first got together, and often talked about boundaries so I didn't think this was a big problem. Turns out it was. Someone found this post and sent it to him. He found it funny enough to show to our mutual friends, but in doing that he accidentally revealed his own Reddit account. After some digging, they saw that he had a very different set of views than what I previously thought and was involved in quite a few incel-ish posts in different communities. Apparently, he had suspicions for a while that I had been lying to him about my preference and thought I was a lesbian, but he believed I would change my mind over time. This came as a total shock to me. A lot of people showed confusion over his behavior, including me, and now this information has come out, it makes more sense that he was letting go of grievances he had been holding onto for a while. 
Needless to say, the relationship is done. I gave the ring back and offered to pay for the cost of the proposal, which she declined. I think it's ultimately for the best. As for whether I'm going to dramatically elope with my best friend, I doubt it. We're like sisters. She's been happily married to a lovely man for the last three years. We're just close, I guess. Anyway, thank you all again for your sometimes brutal honesty in this. All in all, things worked out for the best. Story 3 AITA for not providing a strong job reference for my highly qualified sister Theta Off. My sister Claudia and I are not close. We have very low contact, mostly only when it's family were blooded. When she was fucked on and I was seven ton, she stole my boyfriend by giving up more physically than I was willing to. After that kind of betrayal, I never trusted her fully again and have kept my partners distant from her. It's not just that one event, she's done many things over the years that made me pull back from her. Claudia's awful behavior has continued throughout her life. She's stolen the boyfriends of several three that I know of, of her now ex friends, and she always seems to get bored as soon as the guy leaves his partner for her. Claudia is not a very nice person, but she is superficially charming and makes a good first impression. Twice now at work, Claudia has seduced her married supervisors. This happened with two different people at two different jobs and caused an absolute mess that ended up with the guys resigning. I have no idea what happened to their home situations, but it couldn't have been good. Claudia thrives on drama and absolutely loves it. I suggested counseling to her, but she shot me down saying, I'd have to have a problem to need counseling. Claudia likes the chase more than anything else and believes there's nothing wrong with that. She justifies her behavior by saying, anyone that didn't want to cheat wouldn't cheat. You can see why we don't talk much. My friend Brennan, who I met through a previous job, is now in the same industry as Claudia. Recently, Claudia found out that Brennan's company is hiring. Brennan is Sada Acha for the small company Claudia is interested in, and she applied. Brennan sent me an email from his personal address, not his company account, asking if I could vouch for Claudia, and now I'm stuck. Claudia can absolutely do this job. She will be great at it, except for the fact that she will probably ruin someone's marriage in the process. The fact that she's done this at two out of the three places she's worked long term since college is uncomfortable. There are six times I personally know of that she's done this. Claudia is currently single. I don't know what to do, but I'm leaning towards not replying to the email and calling Brennan to give my honest opinion. She would be an excellent technical fit, but a disaster socially. That way, it's not in writing, and Brennan can still be informed. But, by doing that, I'm directly sabotaging my sister's prospects. On the other hand, if I don't tell him what Claudia is likely to do, I'm sabotaging Brennan. Claudia will pass any screen they give her she's charming and has no record of any kind. Would I be the asshole if I told Brennan my sister would be a great technical fit, but would be a social disaster? Update. I called Brennan nearly a day after his email when I posted. Turns out the reason he reached out to me is because Claudia passed her scrunon slash reference check with the company, but Brennan had the final say since he was going to be working with her directly on some policy stuff and needed to like who they were hiring. Brennan had been hearing rumors about Claudia and wanted to reach out to me to see if I'd be honest with him and tell him if they were true and if working with Claudia would be a nightmare for him. This is where my tightrope walk began. I said that I couldn't discuss any rumors relating to my sister with a potential new workplace, as that would be inappropriate. I refused to give a reference on her since I've never worked with her, and she is family. I hope he understood. Brennan thanked me, and said he wouldn't be hiring her after my refusal. I panicked, realizing I might have just cost her this job. He said it wasn't my refusal personally, but the rumors were too much of a risk when he had a candidate with none to percent of Claudia's abilities slash exporp unsa and none of the potential drama. Brennan said if I'd been willing to vouch for Claudia, or if either of the other two personal contacts he had panned out to reply about her, he might have taken the leap. Everyone ducklin at slash refused, and that was a pattern to him. Brennan then freaked out a little, thinking he might have said too much, so both of us were just in an anxiety hoedown, awkwardly comforting each other. The end of the call was super cringy and embarrassing. I imagine it will be a while before we speak again. So, it appears my sister's drama has cost her a job offer. But I now feel incredibly guilty because I could have been the one to stand up for her and help her get the job. I didn't. I haven't heard from my sister about it and doubt I will. 
Brennan was not the one to interview her or reject her, he met her on one group call, so I don't think she will even consider him or me as the reason for this.